The DCC has been in dialogue with the county commissioners since July of 2006 about the use of the courthouse for the Earl Scrub Center. But it seems like that nobody has been in dialogue with the citizens of Cleveland County to see how they felt about it. And I find that a lot of people are just not real happy about the prospect of the uh, courthouse being called the Earl Scrub Center. Now, I know in, in sense of what they're saying here is that there will not be a sign on that courthouse. I understand that because there is a sign up on the building that is in stone. And there's also a, a sign, a black uh, writing that says Cleveland County. However, a sign can be put in the yard. And if you'll notice in the paper, this is already been referred to as the Scrub Center or the Earl Scrub Center. Now, I think that we need to kind of recap what we said at last meeting so we can go back a little bit and see where we got to this point with the courthouse. The Cleveland County Historical Museum was located inside the courthouse since 1976. And they um, had a pretty nice museum. There was a not a lot of money thrown at it, and I think it's the kind of money thrown at it would be like the kind of money that they're potentially talking about being thrown at this one, that, that we would have had a much more successful museum. Now, the museum was successful. What happened was the exterior had to have some repairs done to it. So in April of 2004, the building was closed with exterior repairs. Soon after that, the bank notified the county that there seemed to be a little bit of a uh, problem with the account. There was something there that was, was uh, curious to them that, that they wanted the county to check into that maybe some uh, financial wrongdoing was going on. So soon after, the, the SBI was called in and the building remained closed. Now, they arrested and indicted for embezzlement one of the employees, she's serving time now, and over a five-year period, according to the papers, that she embezzled more than $200,000. She's repaying, I understand, $90,000. She's serving 18 to 24 months. And if there's any further questions, I'm not going into real detail with a lot of things, but but I can help you further if anybody has further questions about that. But the building remained closed through this. The girl was just sent up in September. They held it, I think, in November, and according to the paper in January is now when she served time. So the building is just now to the point of being considered for use for something. And DCC, Destination Cleveland County, who I'm referring to when I say DCC, came to the county commissioner and asked for permission to use the courthouse for the Earl Scrub Center. And the commissioners have been entertaining the idea of letting them use the courthouse for this. They have not made a decision. Uh, they did give the county manager and the, and the county attorney permission to draw up a consensual agreement to let them see, but that is as far as it is today. It's the point that they have not committed the building for the Earl Scruggs Center. Now, regardless of what you read in the newspaper or what you read in their marketing and advertising, it is not a done deal until the ink is on the line. So I think we still have time to convince the commissioners <coughs> that this is not the be in the best interest of uh, the building, the courthouse, our heritage, the people of Cleveland County in any aspect to have our courthouse called the Earl Scruggs Center. Now how do we get to this point? When the building was closed down, if the building is closed for a year, it can't be reopened until it's brought up to code. That building has some issues that do not meet code. Number one, it doesn't have an elevator. Number two, it doesn't have handicapped accessory accessible bathrooms. So these things have got to be done. So last month, 
the county commissioners allocated $1.5 million to renovate the interior of the building. This should be enough money to do it. And I say this, if we're paying as taxpayers to have the building renovated and it's ours, then we should have some say so as to what is housed in the building. You asked how this building got to this point, I honestly don't know, and I don't want to place blame on anybody. I think that, uh, I know that we have commissioners that oversee the courthouse. I know that we've got a county manager that oversees the courthouse. I know also that we've got a building inspector, and I know that we've got maintenance staff. So somewhere along the line, somebody was not paying attention, and this is how the, the courthouse got in the condition that it is. Or this Cleveland County Historical Museum would still be up and running inside this courthouse if it had not gotten into this condition. Now this girl worked for the Cleveland County Historical Society. The Cleveland County Historical Society uh, hired the help and maintained uh, the building. But anyway, this is the point where we are today. Is we're, we've got a building that's got to have some work done to it before anything can, can be opened up. We've got a group of uh, volunteers down there. Now the DCC may claim them, but a lot of them are not for the DCC plan. I know that for a fact. They are Cleveland County citizens that are in their inventory and getting this stuff ready to be removed for the uh, building to be renovated. And I think all of us applaud them and the work that they're doing. They're doing as volunteers, they're spending a lot of time. And I want to back up and say one thing here. This county belongs to all of us. We're all citizens of Cleveland County. The DCC, the elected officials, the citizens, we're all in this together. And we've got to find something that we can live with and go on down the road as a family. I want to say that I think that all of the elected officials are serving for the right reasons, for the betterment of the community. I think that their hearts are in it, and I think their hearts are in the right place, and they feel like the decisions that they make are in the best interest of all the citizens of Cleveland County. This is a tough job. I would want it, and believe me, it doesn't pay enough. And you have a lot of headaches from it. And very little gratitude, actually, on the other end. But there must be some kind of gratification in knowing that you feel like you have done something to serve your fellow man. I think DCC is a group of citizens who have some of them, some deep pockets, and genuine interest in seeing the, the betterment of Cleveland County. I think that, that they to have their hearts in the right place. I think that they genuinely want to help. And I think that that they want to serve the best for Cleveland County. However, here is where we part company. I think that our officials have have not had accountability to the entire populace and I think that DCC has not have a lot of credibility. We had a situation over at the courthouse. Jim Allen was first idea. Jim Allen, if you all don't know who he is, he was uh, the uh, editor of the Star for many years. He was the agent at, at, for the museum. He was one of the people who started the historical association. And he took a look at the museum back in 2003 and he said, you know, if we added our musical heritage to this museum, I think that we really have something. I think that if we included Snuffy Jenkins and a whole rig roll of people that are from this area, excuse me, along with Earl Scruggs, John Gibson, and all the people that have contributed to our history in the music field, and added a room to the courthouse that this would be something that would revitalize the courthouse and bring a lot of interest to it. 
he got a group together, about 14 or 15 people, and they went to see Don Gibson's family, Earl Scott's family, and they got them on board. They were really interested in doing this. <coughs> and uh, as time wore on, somehow the Scrubs family wanted, and, and I said this in last meeting, and in defense of Louis Scrubs, she was a very tough negotiator. I think somewhere along the line that they wanted that that building for them. They wanted to have the name on it. They wanted uh, control of exhibits and, and maybe other things that maybe they're not even against now because I don't know what is being negotiated at this point with uh, the Earl Scruggs family. But they wanted the John Gibson uh, group to be housed somewhere else. So Jim Allen said this was not what he had envisioned and he, they had a vote and there was a group of people on this committee that decided that they thought that this thing with uh, Jim Allen, <coughs> with uh, John Gibson, uh, and Earl Scruggs, that this was the thing to do. So they voted to move John Gibson to another venue. And this is where Jim left this group as a member of this group that was going to put this together. And he was most upset because he felt like that, that this was not something you could do, to name this and have one person um, as the, the centerpiece. Anyway, the group went to the Rogers Theater to look for a, a home for Don Gibson. And that fell apart because of a contract dispute between DCC and Bobby Rogers. Bobby Rogers had, had given this field or sold this building to Uptown Shelby Association. And there was a clause in the contract that it had to retain the name Rogers Theater on the marquee. So when they put up their sign down there that said Don Gibson Theater and it did not say at the Rogers or the Rogers Theater and he questioned it and they didn't like the fact that it was going to have to say that Rogers, they left and they started talking to the city about the, the flip. And their idea, from what I understood from one of the DCC members, was that they were going to put a little flag in the lobby. But that's not what the contract said. It was a contract dispute. They went to the city of Shelby to ask for the use of the flip. Now this was land that the city bought because they needed it to expand. They needed it for the police department. I think they needed it for parking. Now, I, I uh, say this. If the city did not need that land, they shouldn't have bought it. If the city needed that land, they still need it. So what's going to happen to the police department <coughs> when they do need to expand? And the DCC has been, quote, given the flip. They made a matching grant that if the DCC could raise $500,000, Rick, Rick Howell negotiated this with the city of Shelby. If they could raise $500,000, the city would give them a matching grant of $500,000. That building, they, they were leasing it to them for a dollar a year for four years, and then they could buy it at the tax assessed value, which is $207,137. And they are going to give them 500000 if they can raise 500000 So in other words, they're really giving them the building plus $300,000. Now, this is work that's being worked on right now, the Don Gibson Theater. So that brings us back to where we are at the courthouse. Now, the DCC, another problem is this false advertising. This is fraudulent. Every time you pick up the paper, it's that it's going to be held in the beautiful uptown uh, Cleveland County Courthouse. This is uh, not a done deal, and I have spoken with the commissioners about this. Last meeting, and some of you who were here remember, a question was posed to Commissioner Eddie Holbrook about if this was a done deal, and he said no, it was not a done deal. Then the next question was posed to Johnny Hutchins about why did you all allow them to continue advertising that this was going to be held here if, it, if you hadn't approved it. And Johnny's remarks were, we could, can't tell them what they can advertise. 
Now this is my answer to that. This is the real scary thing. They can't tell them what they can do. They can't tell them what they can advertise. They can't tell them anything because they don't fall under the jurisdiction of the county commissioners. They're not empowered by the people, so they don't fall under our jurisdiction either. We can't fire them. We can't vote them out of office. Yes, they want the taxpayers' building and the taxpayers' money. So I think until we get this group under some kind of lead, at least where, where, where we've got some kind of control of what they do, that they don't need the taxpayers' money and the taxpayers' building. I look at what they've done in this past year, and I just told you what they did about the building with the city. Now, they want the building that is the most famous in our county, the most historical, the most aesthetically beautiful, the most nostalgic, and perhaps financially the most expensive. They want to tie up in a lease where if you and I want to go to our courthouse that we have to go through them. They want to take our artifacts and they want to put our artifacts, maybe 10% of them, on display, the other 90% in storage somewhere, bring them out when they want to. So I say they will be controlling our past by having our artifacts and gambling on our future with their Earl Scrub Center that they think that it's going to make all this money for the county. So I think that accountability is a real problem that we have here and, and the credibility. And I want you to take a look at, with me at the papers that I passed to you. The first page this is the brochure that they did. Very beautifully done. It was done by Westmoreland Printer. I understand it was carved out to a, a, some company to do the inside. Some fine printing. It's very gorgeous. And I've given you some little excerpts from, from uh, this rhythm and root brochure that I thought uh, were very telling. And I've also on the front page given you our county commissioner email addresses. I did not have their phone number. But you see these five people right here? These five people represent 100,000 people in Cleveland County. And it only takes three of them to vote to give our courthouse away. Only three. And let them hear from you if you have anything you want to say. They hear from me often. I know they probably say, oh God, that's nobody but Brenda. And just eliminate it. Um, I also want you to notice here the seal. This is from the Cleveland County Historical Association, and we are reforming this group to um, help preserve our history. I've said here Cleveland County Historical Association is being reformed as the Cleveland County History and Heritage Association for the preservation of our history and our artifacts. We would like for each of you to join and help us preserve our past, share our heritage, and assure the enjoyment of our artifacts for, for the future. Now in the DC brochure, DC brochure, they tell what's going to be inside <laughs> the courthouse. And I'm taking a look at this and I'm saying 10,000 square foot building. And, and they're saying about the artifacts that they think that they threw out a figure of 10% and said um, most museums only have 10% and um, the Smithsonian only has 1%. But that's 1% of what? Of course, everybody knows the Smithsonian has a warehouse that's probably big Shelby. But 10% of our artifacts mean 90% are in storage. But let's take a look at what they're going to do inside this building. Now, they say that upstairs they're going to keep the courthouse pretty much the same. They're going to renovate it, but they're going to keep it as a community gathering room. That sort of tells me that that is the end of that 5,000 square feet. So downstairs you've got 5,000 square feet. 
and you've got a permanent exhibit for Earl Scruggs. You've got an elevator. You've got handicapped accessible restrooms. You've got administrative offices. You've got a gift shop. You've got, now this is reading from this, this <coughs> you don't have this, but this is reading from here. And you have something called food services. I still haven't been able to find out what food services mean. Whether that's restaurant, whether that is restaurant great kitchen. But by the time you take all of this out of 5,000 square feet, I think that we can all agree that there's going to be very little space left for our heritage to be in there. I don't think it's satisfactory with the people of Cleveland County to have 10% of their history on display at any one time. That means 90% is in storage. These artifacts, and some of them may not be worth very much on the market if you were trying to sell them. Because families, they have some sentimental value, maybe without having a lot of, of financial value. But this is the legacy that was left for us by these people that are no longer here. This is all we have of them. And this is our, our torch to carry and pass down to a future generation. Not to put it in boxes where it can't be seen. And I hear all this stuff about all the tourists that are going to come in. Now what about the people that are here that love this museum? How about what we want to do for the people of Cleveland County that's there, that their family stuff is on display. To me, that is as much as important as tourists coming in to take a look at it. And I think a lot of you feel that same way too. I want you to turn over with me on the last page where we're talking about the economic impact study. This is where they say that the Roy Hill School Management at Gardner Webb did a study that showed that this was going to, in the next 10 years, that Don Gibson Theater and the Earl Scruggs Center would bring in excess of $200 million. I think in their own, uh, they say $204 million on their website. Now they're saying that this will come in in uh, hotels uh, and restaurants and shops. And, and people stay here, come here to, to visit this. Now, folks, this would mean $20.4 million a year. This would mean 500 people spending $117.80 a day, every day, 365 days a year in order to meet this. Over a 10-year period. You have to do this for 10 years in order for it to reach that kind of quota. Now let's ask how they got this stuff. From what I understand, two ladies sat down with, with Brandon Plaster and um, David Deere and they asked this question to Brownie. And some of you might have seen their report because it's been passing around on the internet. But what Brownie said was that they had gotten these Garden Web students to go to Ingalls on Highway 74 at the Oak Mill and Ingalls at Bowling Springs to conduct this survey for them. And that they had a red shirt. And one of the professors, uh, they called one of the professors and told them that people were acting strange, I believe was their word, uh, about their red shirts. And what should they do? The professor called Brownie. Brownie told them to just stop on the survey. So, she gave the survey to her committee members and let them finish it. She said in that meeting with these two ladies that she thought about doing another survey. She said that bluegrass was not supposed to be a, a part of this, but it turned out that it was. She also said that she was surprised at the ages in the survey of who said they would come to the museum, that it was late teens to early 20s and 50-something. This tells me that if you've got Garden West students, how old are they? 18, eight, what, late teens to early 20s, that they were probably asking their friends. And the 50-something could be their parents, or it could be the, the people on her committee that she gave 
to finish the survey. However, I'm speculating. But the bottom line is that this survey is tainted because it was not done by a professional survey company and a disinterested third party. Now this is what we're basing all this hoopla in, in Dillon Courthouse is this economic impact study right here. And that's where it came from. That's where it came from. Now, I want you to turn to the first page with me. And I bought this 2007 Strategic Plan Task Force. And I started looking at this question. And I highlighted some things on here that I think are very telling and very important. And, and not only that, but very concerning to the citizens of Cleveland County. I just told you that what we need to pass this is three votes of the county commissioners out of the five county commissioners. And I looked at this, and on their 2007 strategic planning task force that developed their five-year plan, I see the three commissioners they need. How is that? And I wonder if they were ever in the same room at a meeting at the same time, because that can't happen. But that bothers me. Now we want to talk about accountability to the people. And I also see Eddie Bell, who is our assistant county manager, on their sitting down planning for their five years. Dickie Amaya, who was on the city council, he uh, was voted off this past election uh, in November. Then I see Rick Howell, the city manager. And I look down here and I see our county attorney's wife, Mark Gell. Now I'll say this, if you serve on the committee to plan something, you're not likely to vote against it if you're in on making the plan. Now look down at their board of directors, and I see Earl Scruggs' nephews and, and Earl Scruggs' relatives now. Mark, uh, Brandon tells me that Mark's a cousin. But I see two relatives that are pushing for this, and that looks, you know, about right. I can understand family, want the best for family. I do myself. And I see our county manager and our city manager. And now, if you notice, they're ex officio members with voting rights. They can't hold office, but they do have voting rights. But you've got your city manager and your county manager on here, and you've got Marta Holden on here, and you've got Jackie Sibley. Now, Marta Holden is, is uh, the head of the DCC. Jackie Sibley is the head of Cleveland County Tourism. Look at those four folks, every one of them, it's on the taxpayer's payroll. All four of them. David Deere, Rick Howell, our city and county manager. Martin Holden is, is hired by the city of Shelby. She's paid by the city of Shelby. Jackie Sibley is paid through tourism, through the chamber, which is funded by the city of Shelby. Now, I, I think you might begin to see where I have a problem with this, and you might too. This is a conflict of interest. How can you vote to for something and not be influenced by it and biased by it. I've already seen this. I saw I had a conversation with David Deere about a question I wanted to, to uh, get answered for you all about the $60,000 a year that the county gave to the museum. I was trying to clarify things because I didn't want to get up here and make you all think I didn't know the answers to stuff. This was a conversation with him Thursday afternoon. He was very belligerent. He said, Brandon, where are you going with this? And there was sometimes as long as two minute silences in the conversation. And I couldn't help but feel like that if he was not right up in the middle of this and was unbiased, and I told him that last fall. I said, I have a problem, and I told the commissioners about this with sitting on the board. Now, if it came down to a vote for whether this plan was going to be implemented by uh, the county allowing DCC to have the courthouse for the Earl Scrooge Center, I would say that in all fairness that these three commissioners ought to uh, not be able to vote. I don't see how they could vote in good faith after serving on the board. Now, turn with me to the next Leadership Council on the next page. 
And there was a lot of people from Cleveland County, most of them with some deep pockets that, you know, can help out this group. But notice that we do have a city council member here, Larry Ware, and we've also got Bob Yeltsin, our county attorney. Now, remember when I said that the county commissioners gave our county manager and our county attorney the authority to negotiate a lease, a consensual lease agreement for DCC using this courthouse. Now there's one of them, the county attorney on their leadership council, and here on their board of directors is the other one. I don't see how they can negotiate our money and our building without having a conflict of interest. They're negotiating with themselves. Okay, now let's go down here to the budget. This is what they say it's going to cost to get this up and running. The Don Gibson Theater and the Earl Scruggs Theater. Okay, it comes out somewhere near $7 million. And they're going to get grants. They're going to use private money. They're going to use money out of their own pocket. And they're going to use taxpayers' money. Take a look at the Earl Scruggs Theater. The commissioners have approved that one and a half million dollars you see there for the construction and renovation. The commissioners have approved that. That's going to get done. But look down here. You've got $65,000 for a master plan. And if this was not going in there, they would, we would not need that money because we wouldn't have a master plan. Let's look at the exhibits. $2,711,250. Now, I know that, that if we're going to have a lot of these interactive exhibits, and I know this is expensive, but it's also expensive to be bringing all these people from the Smithsonian down here and flying them all over to follow Earl Scruggs around with a three-camera crew in California so they can get a little bit of footage at the Grammy Awards. So I say that, that we could get a good museum up and running and we don't have to spend the kind of money. The next thing is this is really interesting. We got the website design and maintenance. Now this is thirty thousand dollars. Right now it's two pages. It was one page. I don't know anything about website design, but from what I hear, that's an awful lot of money. But look, it's, it's being <laughs> marketing. Millennium Marketing is the one who is handling this. And if you look out the side, this Millennium Marketing that is handling it is it's owned by Debbie Clary, our MC House of Representative Debbie Clary, and her nephew, Joseph Hurst. Now I look at that and I say, why is it that every time I look at their stuff, our public officials keep popping up? Could there be some reason that all these public officials are on here? Now, the next thing is the pre-opening, the grand opening and marketing, $275,000. If we weren't pre-opening, grand opening and all this, we wouldn't need that money. Folks, I think we could renovate this courthouse for that million and a half. I think we could get it up and running, and I think we could have ourselves a nice museum. Now, we, we can get grants, and I have somebody back in the back that has done this before, I believe, that would tell you how to do it. And then last but not least, we've got these testimonials over here for everybody's endorsing it. Now I'd like you to, to take the time right now before we talk and look at this video. Beautifully done. It's only eight minutes long. It was done by uh, Channel 33, and I commend it great on it because it's, it's uh, a wonderful piece of work. But I want you to look at uh, this is what they are uh, using as their selling tool. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I thought I was just dealing with you.